So last time we were working on this, we, uh, we did this guy here and we did it in oil paint. And um, that's now touch dry. It's, for me, it's been quite a while. It's been about two days, but if you use liquid like we did it here in the example, it should be pretty touch dry for you by now. Um, Cause like I said, liquid's gonna speed that drying process up a little bit. Um, so I think today we're gonna work on this um, background here, this big dark layer of trees that we have. And we're gonna go in first with a um, glaze just to really make those dark colors pop from behind the colorful portions of these trees. Um, it's a very dark color. And so I don't know if we're gonna use the tapping technique, but we'll go ahead and see what it's gonna take here. So let's go ahead and start making some, some paint. And just for you guys' reference, I am currently on the panel. I have titanium white, cobalt blue, ivory black, and I have a little bit of lemon yellow. I'm not sure if we're gonna use that yet um, or if I wanna to transition to that a straight sap green, but I think we can mix a green with these, the yellow, the lemon yellow rather, and the cobalt blue, in addition to a little bit of black with some uh, good old liquid here. So why don't we go ahead and get started. I am going to go straight into this mixture of paint with liquid. That off a little bit. Luckily, it's not brush. Don't care about it too much. So I'm just going to add a little more liquid to my little jar head here. Small amount. Don't want to waste it. And let's go ahead and mix some paint. So I'm going to start off primarily with the majority of liquid, like we talked about in the last video. And this is gonna be used for the glaze. Now, when we're making glazes, it's important that we're adding paint to the pile of liquid. Now, if we wanted to improve the flow of our paint and give it a little bit of transparency, we would put the paint down first and add the liquid into the majority paint. And there might be something we use that for here in the future. So stick with me and uh, let's go with this method for now. So I'm gonna add in a very, I wanna start with the cobalt blue. It doesn't really matter how much you add in. I would say stick on the lighter side for now. And then I'm gonna add in the lemon yellow. Bearing in mind that this is a glaze and I don't need to be too accurate. Just good enough that it looks correct. Going into that ivory black. And I think we're gonna be just fine on color value here. So just trying to get a darker color for that backdrop there to go behind all the colorful trees we have. It's a pretty cool dark color. It looks completely black, but it really isn't if you zoom into the photo. It's got a kind of cool feel to it. I think this might be a good color to start off with. So I've got about 75% liquid in here. You know, 5% black, 10% cobalt blue, and 10% lemon yellow. I think that makes 100, if not, oops. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and start going into this painting here and I'm really, I'm gonna see how this tapping method looks over the top of this right now. And then I'll go ahead and reassess from there and I think it looks all right. But I just wanna get this suggestion of layers of trees in here for now. I can always come back and darken some of these up. So I think I'm gonna stick with this for now. Bear in mind, we have some lighter glazes we can put in here, but let's go ahead and put the darks in and we'll come back to that. So just picking out these darks here, Trying to make sure there's no real globs of paint on here. It's not the point. And just getting all those dark areas, really trying to bring out that background. Kind of like this. We can always go back and darken it up and not every area is splotchy like I'm doing. It's some areas you could honestly just go back and kind of brush it over and it would look probably fine. Now, what I will say is, is when you get to the tree line here that touches the sky, you do want to probably add a little bit of texture like that, because it's going to make it appear as though the trees are popping over the tree line. And if you just brush it on it, you wouldn't get individual marks as well. I'm gonna add a little more ivory black to this. This is small now. It's good, but it's not exactly how I want it, which is okay. It doesn't, like I said, it just needs to be close, not too accurate. It's just a glaze, guys. Not a big deal, least of my worries. I'm gonna come over here now. Remember how I said I painted over this section a little bit with the sky? Well, we're gonna fix that right now, like so. Super easy to fix. 
but we need to do it correctly so it looks okay. And voila, it looks fine. Now I'm gonna probably fix the, oh, the, the how the, far the trees go up, but you know, it, at least there's not a lot of blue in there anymore. So it doesn't matter too much over here, just getting a, uh, another thing you can do is if you have a really choppy brush like this, as far as uh, how new it is, if it's old, you can kind of just do a little bit of that right there. And that also gives the suggestions of trees in there. So adding a little more to the brush here, just trying to load up on these areas that I can really tell are darker than the others. Definitely in here. May even add to, need to add a little bit of um, ivory black to that again. I wanna go back up here and get the rest of these areas so I don't miss them. And remember, this is gonna be a lighter portion, so I'm gonna go back in with a smaller brush later on here and take care of that. And I don't wanna to go too far up because I wanna leave line to put, or room rather, to put some actual suggestions of trees, evergreens in here. That's even a little too high right there, so I wanna really make sure I'm taking care to watch where I'm going in this section. Now, it's pretty dark all through here, especially you know, you have this lighter tree and then the darkness kind of comes down a little bit and you have another lighter tree and it comes down like that. And then you have this kind of weird color that doesn't really fit, but it looks fine in here. It's the yellowy green. So I need to take close care not to go over that too much. It doesn't really matter if I go over it a little bit because I have things that I can do to fix that. But the less work I have to do, the better, right? I hope that's the same for you guys. Work smart, not hard. Sometimes you got to do both but painting is supposed to be fun, not stressful. Don't make it stressful. A little more black in there. Lemon yellow, it's gonna bring out that natural green out of the ivory black. Stay off the blue for a sec here. So, We've just zoomed in a little bit, and I'm just adding, like I said, a bit darker color in here to really set apart that tree line, very obvious tree line. And then just a very small amount of mineral spirits, more liquid, a little more black, lemon yellow, cobalt blue. Mix it off to the side here a little bit, a little more lemon yellow. You need to try and preserve that green tone here. Or really, I guess I should say the blacks that we have. So just kind of continuing to work into that space here. It doesn't need to be perfect. Got a few of them kind of up in here a little bit. Making some of those tree line areas. And maybe it comes down in here. And you can make a line even if you want to kind of work around. Like on just an initial line right off to the side there. Make sure you have a lot of paint on the brush or a decent amount because you want to go over that liquid layer we already put on and you're probably at this point smudging a lot of it, which is okay because it's a darker color so it's not going to matter too much, but um, when it dries it may look a little different if you don't. I like it. We're going to continue on with that color. Wow. Well, very rarely does that happen where I like a color initially. I'm getting a little better at it, but that's why we're here, right? We're here to learn. I'm definitely learning um, a lot. <laughs> Learn how to make videos, that's for sure. Man, it's quite a process. Love it, but it is time consuming. A lot to think about actually, you know. I talk to myself when I paint sometimes, um, but this is a different type of talking to yourself, I guess. You really have to kind of go with the flow, but have a decent plan. So what I'm doing here is, if you'll notice in that reference photo, there's a lot of darks right in this area right there. And I'm just kind of making tree suggestions here. I'm just kind of drawing like, if you've ever seen like an EKG or a heartbeat, like on the monitor at the hospital, how they kind of go doo -doo, doo -doo, the waves, the QRS waves. That's kind of what I'm doing with this. I'm kind of just whoop, up and down, up and down. And it's giving me a good base that I'm going to paint my trees off of when this liquid glaze dries, which may take a little longer since we're adding some more to it. So bear that in mind, don't be, don't be impatient with it. Make sure you let it dry completely because it may ruin the painting if you work into it a little too quick. So just trying to chop up some of these darker areas to give a little more 
shape and formity, or rather deformity is what I meant to say, to these trees, making them look appear a little more natural than they do right now. And a lot of this is going to be done by the branches and the leaves, but I want to give myself a good base to work with. Working smart, not hard. Remember that. Okay, so a lot of darks in here. I'm just going to level out some of these darks against this red tree here. I've got a little bit of white in the sky there, and I can take care of that by just putting a very f small amount of dark paint into that. So just still kind of working in these random dark little splotches here, bearing in mind that we have some trees that pop out and we can do this with this brush actually. I think it's gonna be fine. So I'm gonna actually use this brush to do that now that I think about it. I wanna just go to the very top of each of these tree lines, making sure I do match the color because that is a very important thing to do um, for the top of the tree lines and kind of just add in these very small marks. And you know what, I think to do that, I'm actually gonna dip into the size zero rigger brush that I'm using right here. I think this is a ooh, Rosemary Inco, Rosemary Inco, really nice brush. So just dipping into some of that liquid, going back into that original mixture we had, maybe lighten up a little bit. So, and then I'm gonna take it and I'm gonna go up here and just make suggestions of little trees. Definitely try and space them apart. See, not too hard at all. Just get a top point, work down from there. You know, just do some random stuff. Make it so it looks good to you, is what I guess I'm trying to say. It does not have to be perfect by any means. You could probably honestly do this with a fan brush if you felt comfortable. My only concern would be slipping up and getting too much into the sky up here and making the proportions off. So I'd probably suggest sticking to a smaller brush like this, but you don't have to, not at all. Take what you learned in some of the other videos and apply it to this one. I'm just giving you guys one way to look at things. So not too bad. It doesn't look as realistic as I want it to now because I think some of these trees really differ in color and texture and shape and size and well, it might be a little hard to convene that currently. So I might actually go back to working on this area down here and then come back to doing this tree line a little later. And I have a little more to work with, but you get the point of how you would do it. Very easy and effective way to make your paintings pop. I just wanna try and break up some of these null areas of the painting that are dragging a lot of attention that I don't want. Making them look up here, appear as though they're more natural in nature. And this is where we're really gonna fix this area is by adding those top portions of the trunks and leaves and you know whatnot to this painting. So, yeah. So we have a few tree ones that kind of go a little farther up and they're a little lighter. So I'm gonna add a little bit of the lemon yellow and just a very small amount of um, mineral spirits and liquid to this. Cause I don't wanna get too dark with it. But I need to also make sure this tree line stays fairly proportional to itself as it is in the picture. So I'm just gonna make, and honestly, you know what? I think this would be better done with the brush we were using for the get go. So. I'm going to go back to this brush I had earlier that we were using for the glaze here. I'm going to dry it out because I don't want it to be too thin. And I'm honestly just going to kind of add a little more lemon yellow to this. Kind of like that. Just dab into it. And I'm going to take this and do exactly what we were doing for the darker portions on here. But I'm going to make a tree line now. Just using the tip of that brush probably. Let's see what it looks like. Not bad. It's just going to spread it out more and look a little more bulky than I have it right now. We need to lighten up on that a little bit. Little titanium white, lemon yellow, dip into that. Looking good, like it. That looks actually much better. I would suggest doing that. So God, glad we kind of caught that now. It was looking okay right about here, but then it kind of kind of moved up and it was a little too choppy for me. I didn't really like the way it was playing out. It worked a lot better in my head, I guess is what I'm trying to say. 
easily corrected though. Very easy correction. Try and not make splodges like I just did. It'll look a lot more natural if you can stay away from those. It doesn't look too bad right now, but I should bear in mind that I have a lot of blank area up here that would really pop something that I didn't want to be popped or show something a little more in my painting that I was trying to hide like a mistake. A lot of room for air in this area. Trees are very naturally occurring, so you need to make them look natural, but you do need to kind of think about where you want them to be placed in reference to where the sky meets the tree line. Because that can draw unnecessary attention to a spot that needs no attention. I think that looks good. I want to leave it like that for now. That gives us a good base to work against. So I'm going to, once again, I'm going to put that brush in the uh, wash pan here with the mineral spirits. Kind of transfer some of these other ones out. And I want to go back to using that extremely dark color. So back to the uh, size one, brighter brush. Just mix them back into that almost near black color there. And I'm just going to bring it down a little more. Down into here a little bit. No, it doesn't have to be too accurate. Do keep in mind though that we have some pretty distinct trees right here. So don't go don't don't, don't go too crazy with it. Just, you know, a few here and there. Reload the brush every so often. black, a little more liquid too. Blue and yellow, cobalt blue. So I want to kind of define the edges of this tree here. It's actually probably not going to be dark enough. I need to maybe add some mineral spirits. So just kind of working on some squiggly lines in here to give us an idea of where that dark meets the light here. Kind of goes up. Goes up and down. Not too concerned. A little few of them in here. I give it a little bit of tree line here. And a few in here. You know, just trying to break up the colors a little bit, the color scheme, I guess I should say. Fits a lot better. So, you know, this back color here is more of a pukey green that I just realized because I looked at the lighter layer that sits over it. And we're gonna have a hard time really matching that if we don't darken up on that. I was a little weary of it in the, get, the beginning because I didn't wanna to go too dark and it look awkward. But I think we might have to now. So just trying to kind of give this tree a little bit more form in there before I do that. And, you know, realistically, a lot of things at this point are just gonna be putting these lighter colors over here in a strategic way to make this seem as though it is textured in actual trees. Um, so why don't we kind of form a plan for how we want to take care of this area right in there? I think I know how I want to do it. Unfortunately, I think it might entail adding some actual sap green to the palette. I want to try and preserve my paints as much as I can. I like to say paint, you guys know that, but we may have to add some in here, but let's um, let's see what we can do. So just kind of mix into this lighter color, a lot more lemon yellow, a lot more. A little bit of ivory black, just dip into that. And a little more cobalt blue. I'm gonna add just a very small amount of liquid. Let's see where this uh, gets us tone-wise. Now for this specific one, I'm gonna start off by really dabbing us on like that. But then as soon as I get into here, it needs to be more choppy like that. 
and blocked in. So feel free to just kind of brush this on at this point because I need this to be one solid color. It doesn't really need to be textured because the texture is going to be with the lighter colors that go over it. So just blocking that kind of lighter tree line in there. I like it. So here's what we have right now. Um, I think I'll save the next portion of this for a later video, but we have the sky blocked in and the trees, and we've got them detailed right here with some liquid uh, or a glaze. And we can see how this looks kind of from a distance, and it's pretty touch dry. Um, uh, mind you, this is a day after I've done it, but uh, the point is, is it dries pretty quickly, and as you can see, it gives pretty significantly detailed um, trees and texture. It looks very realistic, and so that's why I prefer to use glazes in these areas here. All right, guys, well, thanks for watching again, and I hope you really enjoyed uh, watching this and learning some of the techniques that I use to do some of my landscape paintings. Um, and my love for landscape paintings. And on that note, um, if you enjoyed the video, make sure you subscribe by hitting that button down in the bottom portion there. And be um, be prepared for some, some pretty good content coming here very, very soon, um, now that I've got some more time to make it. Uh, and also, that reminds me that if you like this video, this video segment, although it was short, um, here soon you'll be able to purchase uh, full-length videos, uh, some ranging from 5 hours to 12 hours on how I do my landscape paintings from start to finish, no time lapses, no cuts, nothing. Um, and you will be able to purchase that uh, probably on Patreon. I have not established a website yet just because I have not ever sold my stuff up until now, but uh, I would like to give you guys a full-length video, although it's taken me around a half a year to make. Um, just because I've been busy with other stuff, but I am getting close to finishing it, and once I do, I will let you know on my website, uh, I'm sorry, rather on my YouTube channel here, in addition to, uh, if you subscribe, you'll get an email regarding the uh, availability of that full-length video. So, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time, guys. All right.